Welcome here to more Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys to yet more reaction to that crazy crazy end to the transfer window. In today's video we are going to be recapping and reacting to everything that happened there on deadline day in terms of departures from the club and of course we are also going to have a full overview of all the business that we've done in this window and discussing about whether we've made progress there in the right direction. It is all coming up. It's plenty on the agenda. So let's get to it. Because I want to start, first of all, with some news there on further wage reductions. Of course, the sales are very, very important, and we are going to come on to those all-important departures. But also reducing that wage bill from the players who are staying at the club is also very, very important. And it has now been confirmed that Jordi Alba and Sergio Busquets have followed Gerard Piquet's lead. They have themselves accepted, and it's been confirmed by the club now, wage reductions. It's fantastic news. I really appreciate what they've done. I think we're all certainly very much behind those decisions and as a result of that now, Sergio Aguero has been officially registered as a new Barca player. He's been registered in La Liga and he'll be ready to go when he returns from injury. And that means that now out of the four captains, three of those have agreed wage cuts. They've all been thanked by the club but one has not. Sergio Roberto is the only captain right now who is yet to finalise there a wage adjustment and that's following reports that he's apparently unhappy about the contract renewal offer that Barca have presented him with. Barca they're looking to renew him with a 40% cut in his current salary. Sergio Roberto is not happy with that but his contract expires next summer. So if you don't like the offer, there is the door. But if we then move on to deadline day and indeed some of the exits that we saw from Barca and exactly what we thought of those exits, starting there with Raymond I, of course, had an electric start to preseason. He scored a hat-trick there in our first preseason game against Gymnastique. He followed that up with another goal against Girona. And he has, of course, been included in the first team squad for the opening three games of the season, although he was yet to appear in any of those matches. And of course, we knew throughout the summer that he had offers there from Syria, from Portugal, as well and he's at 24 years old now and I feel as though if he wasn't going to be trusted in the first team if he wasn't going to get that game time maybe he would have been better off going elsewhere and making that next step in his career and it has indeed been confirmed that Raymond I will leave and join Spezia in Italy for the coming season he's going to join there on an initial loan deal they're going to pay 300,000 euros for that loan and at the end of the season Spezia do have an option to buy Raymond I for two 2.7 million euros, which of course if activated would take the total to 3 million euros. And I've got to say there, optimistically, I was hoping for a little bit more in terms of that transfer fee. Of course, there is every chance that if Spezia, say, get relegated from Syria next season, they may not even take up that buy option. But I think there that is a little bit on the cheap side. And of course, the question will be, with Luke de Jong coming in now as that additional forward, if Ronald Koeman really did want something more in that number nine position, could we have stuck with Raymond I? Then, of course, there is the matter of Elash Moriba, a situation there that has been ongoing all summer long. It's been very, very clear for many, many weeks now, actually, that he's had no future at Barca. He's entering, of course, the final year of his contract and negotiations over a renewal, they had completely stopped there. We've been desperately trying to find a suitor for Elash Moriba to avoid him leaving for free next summer. And RB Leipzig right throughout the summer have been the team pushing most for him. They made there the first official bid for Elash of 6 million euros at the time. That was very much knocked back by Barca and there had been interest from the Premier League. Tottenham in particular apparently were very, very close to Elash. But reports suggested that they weren't happy with the demands that Elash's agents were making. I mean, imagine that. You know, we can certainly relate to that too. But it has anyway been confirmed now that Elash will be on his way to Germany. He's joined there. RB Leipzig on a permanent deal. And I've got to say, really good transfer fee for him. We have received 16 million euros with an additional 6 million euros possible there in variables and add-ons. And I think that there for me is a great transfer fee. He's in the final year of his deal. He's a young, unproven player at the top level. That is top, top business from our side. And especially since... We have a 10% sell-on clause in that deal. So for any future sale, if Elash, you know, goes on to achieve what his agents believe that he can in his career, you know that RB 
Leipzig, they're going to cash in at the first opportunity. And if he was sold for, say, 50 million, we would there be getting 5 million from that deal. So Barca in with the chance of getting more money from Elash further down the line as he leaves to join Leipzig. But I think probably the most controversial exit on deadline day from Barca's point of view would certainly be Emerson, because of course it wasn't all that long ago that Barca activated their 9 million buy option to sign Emerson there outright from Real Betis. We already own 50% of his rights. That 9 million there enabled us to have full control of the player after that part ownership deal that was agreed by Bartomeu. But even once that happened, I think already there were rumours about Emerson, whether we were going to cash in on him, whether we we're going to use in there to generate some much needed funds this summer in a very similar way I would say to what happened with Yerry Mina signing him on the cheap and then selling him for a bit more to get that profit although of course Emerson did appear in our opening three games of the season he has actually appeared in all of them 90 minutes in total he came on for 20 minutes there against Real so if you had the last few minutes at San Mamés and he did make indeed his one and only start in a Barcelona shirt at the weekend against Atafé and I've got to say overall Emerson I'm not going to say that that he made a massive impression in those three games. But look, that is kind of what you'd expect from a player at their new club. It was very, very difficult for him to come in and just straight away be showing all of that quality that he showed at Real Betis because it does take time to settle in. And the fact is, of course, that he never got that time and he never will because he has been sold to Tottenham in the Premier League there. He's making the move to North London on a deal worth around 25 million euros. Although it has been reported in some quarters, although not by the club, but it could go up to 30 million euros. But either way, Barca will have to give 20% of that fee to Real Betis. That was another clause that was agreed during Bartomeu's deal with the club over Emerson. So some of that fee will be lost. Of course, we did already pay 9 million. So there's not all that much of a gain for us. But I think it was a case here of getting some money in. It kind of tells you everything about our current situation. And of course, you would be looking now at our team thinking, OK, what's going to happen at right back? Because yes, we have Serginho Dest, but does it mean now that Sergio Roberto is going to be the backup? Is he even going to try and rival Dest and that first team spot still at right back? You know, surely, surely not that's going to happen. Because what I would say is Oscar Mingetha is there. That is my one hope there. If we are going to sell Emerson, if we have to try and get that money in, it's disappointing. You know, it's his dream to play here. It does hurt to kind of see him move on that quickly and swiftly but in his place Mingetha showed last season that he can play right back when needed that he can be a good substitute in that role Dest has his chance now to make that position his own and even more so now he really needs to shine and I think in summary, guys, when you are looking at this transfer window, I think the one thing that it has been, the one word that I would use to describe this transfer window, it has been turbulent. I think it has been very, very emotional. I think we've been one way, then the other. It has been very much a roller coaster. Of course, the bottom line is, and the headline of this entire window, is that we have lost Lionel Messi. Something there that we never expected, we never wanted to happen. Griezmann, of course, leaving on the final day was also a very, very big shock. But I think in terms of sales, in terms of players that we've actually been able to sell. Obviously, there's players in there that I'm disappointed haven't gone. That will certainly continue to disappoint me throughout the entire season that we weren't able to get rid of some of those players who are just not going to play. But I think the ones that we have sold there, as you can see, we have got some decent fees. We have been able to bring some much needed money in. And of course, wages. That's the really, really important part of Barca right now. Griezmann being moved off that wage bill. It is a significant burden there that is no longer going to be on our wage bill. That is very, very important. And of course, signings coming in. Let's look at it there. We have spent absolutely nothing. I think the big, big signing for us throughout the entire window, Memphis Depay, coming in there on that free transfer, already showing his quality, already having that immediate impact. And I think in general, we kind of done what had to be done. There are some things that we haven't quite been able to do, like I say. I think in general, we've been limited what we can do in terms of spending. And I just look at this window right now, and I look at all the decisions that have been made, and all that I can think is, next summer, we're going to go for it. I think next summer, for this club, it's massive. We will be in such a better position. We will have all of this money here that we've raised. Now, look, we haven't spent it. We haven't spent this money. We've reduced wages. We are building here for something big. Next summer, get ready. Because we will be strengthening. We may not have done it as well as we would have liked to have done it this summer. All we've been doing is generating funds, moving out wages, and biding our time. 
So please, guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like I say, it has been a whirlwind few days as a Barca fan, and certainly they're trying to keep up with all of the deals, all of the rumours, all of that kind of stuff. It has been very, very draining. But I really do appreciate you guys here coming back consistently, getting involved with the videos. But what do you make there of the exit that we've seen, the transfer fees that we've been able to get? And of course, what do you make in general of our transfer window this summer? It has been tough. We knew already that we were going to have limitations. And like I say... There are a few players there that I still wish we could have moved on. But still, we move forward now with our season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And let's see where we end up. I'll see you soon, guys. And I thank you again for watching. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Bussa. Oh.